Yes, and Big Monday presented by Bud Light is back in the Big 12 Conference tonight from Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa. Number 14, Kansas on hand to take on the Iowa State Cyclones. And our star watch tonight, a young man who has really come on strong. And I mean the confidence level continues to grow for Keith Langford. 18 points, 10 rebounds. That's what he did this past Saturday. Hi, everybody. Ron Frank from along with John Sunball, and welcome to Big Monday. We're anxious to get this one started. John, not as many smiles on a Kansas bench. A very large body and an important body is not in uniform and may not be for a number of weeks. Well, the question uh, early in the season for Kansas, did they have enough depth off the bench? Now Wayne Simeon is hurt. They don't know for how long. The question will be answered tonight. How good is the depth? Jeff Graves will start it forward. The other part about it, though, Ron, is it gives Roy Williams and his coaching staff now the ability to tinker with a lineup. They might go four small guys and one guy, Nick Collison, in the middle and tell Iowa State, hey, come guard us with quickness. That's what you'd look for them to do as well, isn't it? I think so. So here are the starting lineups. Miles, Heinrich, Langford, Graves, and Collison. And for Iowa State, Barnes, Jake Sullivan, Haluska, an outstanding freshman. You're going to like him. Roman, an outstanding junior college transfer. His motor always running. And Holman, the last time we were here against Boston College, he absolutely had the game of his life. And they're all going to need to tonight as we look at Roy Williams because... Kansas obviously even with the injuries is Kansas but Larry Eustacey has a winning record against Roy Williams in conference play which is something a lot of guys in this conference can't say well the rest of them can't say it. Uh, Larry Eustacey can and he'll be the first to admit he's had a few good players on his sideline Jamal Tinsley being one of those in the last few years very good veteran officiating crew here tonight Steve Welmer Steve Olson and Tom O'Neill and it's going to go to the Jayhawks to open things up and a man defensively by Iowa State. Langford, this is what he likes to do best with the drive, couldn't get it to go, and Collison is right there with the easy follow. And if you go to an Iowa State practice, Ron, 90% is defense and rebounding, and neither one was done on that side. Dribble penetration, good follow by Collison. Jake Sullivan looking inside. Challenge for Graves now and Collison not to get in foul trouble early. Holman can't get the jumper to go, and here comes the Jayhawks again. Miles will run. Got by Barnes, pulls up and hits the 16-footer and swishes it. One thing, when one player is injured, do the teammates step up their game, and do the does the opponent sometimes step down their game? Because they just don't think that Kansas will be good enough. Kansas is still. How many times have you seen that? And particularly, like when you were playing as well. It happens all the time. And, and the key for Kansas, they still have two preseason All-Americans, Collison and Heinrich. This is Barnes, pumps it, barely drew iron. Rebound comes down to Graves, and the Hawks will run again. Love to push, love to find the open man. Now the crowd getting a little restless. They want to see Iowa State come alive. First of all, on the defensive end, and there is a travel by Collison. So turnover number one against Kansas. And Larry Eustacey coming out, and he's not talking about offense. He's telling his players, bend your knees and play defense. Yeah, 20 straight wins for this Kansas basketball ball club through the Big 12. Last year, a perfect 16-0, which most of us thought would never happen. Barnes with the bounce pass over to Haleska. Spreading the floor. Barnes with the bouncer, and off Roman and turnover against Iowa State. And Larry Eustacey wants a timeout, and emphatically, calls the timeout and now uh, here comes probably should <laughs> hand out some uh, some vests <laughs> that retard heat John talk about the last time Kansas lost actually it was uh, the two Jake Sullivan Shane power who has since transferred that led this team to a win Tinsley had a bundle of assists they shot lights out, and those two freshmen were outstanding. Jake had 22 points on the night. His ball club right now, though, got to catch on fire because uh, they, you see, the number's 22, 6 and 8. I talked to him uh, tonight before this game about that game. He said, you know, John, it was nice when nobody knew you much on the floor. But he said they didn't guard me very well. Graves out high. Looking inside. Graves on the cutter, and he loses it out of bounds. I would imagine there are more than a few butterflies going uh, 
in his stomach right now with his first start conference play. Well, one man's misfortune is another man's fortune. Jeff Graves now gets a chance to play minutes and big minutes and important minutes. He's got to catch that ball. He made a nice cut. Miles put it right on the money. Good defense by Miles. Well, it's going to be foul against Sullivan. That's his first, team's first. This is understanding the scouting report. Aaron Miles trailed that play because he thought he could pick it off. New Sullivan was coming from the backside, jumped it quickly. Miles, an outstanding point guard, might not get the attention that everybody else gets because of uh, Carlson Heinrich. Uh, people just don't give him enough of his due. Heinrich tried to hit it with a soft touch, and it's going to be a foul against Graves. Holman driving to the hoop, and Roy Williams is up, palms down, and what he's saying to Graves is, you don't have a lot of bodies now, so don't waste any fouls. And what you see early from the point guard, Tim Barnes, a junior college transfer, southeastern Illinois, is the fact he can push. He is speed on speed. He will come right at you. If his teammates will run, he will find them. A great assist man doesn't make a lot of turnovers. I know he hasn't been on campus here at Ames very long. But the coaching staff and the, the fellow players will admit of all the guys that Iowa State cannot afford to lose, it is this uh, this young guard that has come in here to play this year. Well, watching Iowa State in the last uh, four or five years under Larry Eustacey, the importance of the point guard is highlighted here because they run a lot of spread offense. A year ago in the Ricky Morgan, they struggled out at that spot. Now with Tim Barnes for a better ball club. Steal by Barnes, and he'll push it. Miles gets around. Good job in transition this time by KU. Holman off the market of Heinrich, skying for the rebound. One thing about pushing the basketball, you know, and Sullivan will run the floor and spot up his shooter. Collison out high from the screen on Haleska. Holman makes the steal, step right in front. That is four turnovers already against KU. And here's another steal. Heinrich, can he keep it at bounds? No. Ron, I think conference play, everybody is excited. Guys are scrambling playing at too fast of a pace. No one has settled down yet. You kind of have the preseason games where you might have some big games, you might have easy ones. Then all of a sudden you get to conference play. Game one, big Monday, national TV, here they go at each other. A lot of turnovers early. You know, John, the first thing that the coaches try to explain to the players, no directional schools here now. Sullivan tried to get a three-point foul shot here. And uh, the officials said, nope, get up. Other end, Miles swishes the jumper. You know, this is a perfect guard game right now. Back and forth. It's like playing at the pickup uh, facility down the road. Back and forth they go. Once you start conference play, obviously uh, everybody tightens the screws a little bit. That nine-man rotation goes to a seven. Well, the emotions are so high, especially five minutes of a ball game. We, we take a look at a guy like Jeff Graves who's had trouble with his conditioning. You know, the first five minutes of this ball game, he's hanging in there, but it is a lot tougher than any game he's been in. One of the things that John is talking about, Graves came in at 40 pounds yeah, overweight. As he goes up and pulls down the rebound. Heinrich pushes it. He traveled. Turnover number five. Wow. If he has a weakness uh, in his four years at Kansas, and there aren't many weaknesses, he's an outstanding player. At times, he will get in a little bit of a hurry. He's got a fourth gear that is fast enough, but he kind of pushes it sometimes too much instead of hesitation and then exploding. Boy, Iowa State 0 of 5 from the field. The two points have come at the free throw line. Not many touches so far for Broman, a guy who averages nearly 14 points a ball game. Good defense by this Jayhawk team. They're lucky that Barnes is a good athlete and anticipates well that that would have been another turnover. Sullivan tries to post up and it's blocked by Graves. Miles looking for someone on the wings and there's Broman. Aluska was on the wing, didn't see him. Sullivan for three. Ron, can they play any faster? I mean, this is just back and forth. She will take a timeout. 15-23 left to play in this first half. KU, 6-2. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball. Brought to you by Wendy's Super Value Meal. The best 99 cents you can spend. And Rolling Rock Beer. Grab a rock. Well, we were talking during the timeout of the number of players that are already winded. Look at these numbers. Sullivan, all of four for the field. And each KU starter already has a turnover. I, I think in a timeout, a coaching staff says, OK, take a deep breath. Let it out, breathe it in. We will not win the conference championship tonight. 
but but get out there, keep playing hard. Great point. About to go under the first five good pass, and uh, Roman's going to find out in a hurry if he allowed Allison to get that ball there. Just go ahead and hit to the other end quickly. Yeah, you know, Roman, athletic, good speed, good footwork, but he's got to be careful. Make Collison beat him over the top of it. Good pass though by Gray. Alley oop to Roman, too high. Barnes tried to get. Uh, not too many mistakes. Take a look at the low post positioning by Nick Collison. One of the best in college basketball at establishing it and keeping it. Collison took a step closer, got by Roman and jammed it home. And right now, a clinic going on. Roman needs uh, a pad and pencil here to take notes. Well, it's a different ball game than they've played. Uh, this is a ball club that's had two challenging games. One, they failed when they played at home against Boston College. Boston College came in and won that game. On the road, Iowa State did beat Iowa, which was a huge victory. This is a ball club, Iowa State, that's getting better. They now have four turnovers early in this game. But the tempo, the pace, everything changes when you get to conference play. We have an outstanding officiating crew, and they're going to let these guys play. And so last time down, Roman tried to take a flop. Well, it won't work here in the Big 12. Jake tried to take a flop just a while ago, and uh, they wouldn't let that happen. Good Roman, hands that time. Roman with a second steal. Here's Barnes behind that screen, and can't get the jumper to go. And great down with another rebound. You have to like how Graves is playing well early, Ron. Langford loves to drive it and gets this one, takes it to the stick. Probably at least as good as uh, Nash when it comes to being the most athletic person on this KU ball club. But Langford can do a little bit of everything. He can shoot it from outside and loves to dribble penetration. Another underrated player nationally. I think. Uh, had a great freshman season a year ago. This year, double figures average. Has been in double figures 11 of the 12 games. Good shooter, good penetrator. Well, we are about to go into 13 minutes in Larry Stacey's ball club. 0 for 8 from the field. Yeah, the dribbles have been picked up. There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one action. Got to find a way to get guys open. Roman. Nope, not there. Miles against Barnes. Outstanding. Well, there's more basketball on the way at midnight Eastern time. Number 21, Texas Tech is out at San Diego State. 9-1 to to the Red Raiders. Six straight victories for the Aztecs. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. That's coming up at tonight. Steve Fisher's got a good crew. Texas Tech, Andre Emmett, Kasib Powell. Outstanding. They are really playing well. You know, we were talking. I've been able to see them a number of times. And Coach Knight is really doing a good job with that ball club. Uh, they're they're going to be a force. Yes, they will. And it is a team. Tough. Sullivan out of the game now. Cyclone ball club has to find a way to score. Jefferson checks into the lineup, number 50. Marcus a junior out of East Chicago, Indiana. Another turnover. Right now, Iowa State now Larry wants another timeout. Well, the problem of putting it on the floor, picking it up, and when you do that against Kansas, this Jayhawk team under Roy Williams, and, and always under Roy Williams, they will attack defensively. They have shut off the passing lanes. When the dribblers picked it up, there have been no avenues, and that resulted in a lot of turnovers. Well, here's a reminder that Super Tuesday on ESPN and ESPN2 featuring top 25 matchup. First of all, on ESPN2 at 8, this is where John and I will be tomorrow night. Norman, Oklahoma, number three, UConn, in town to take on number nine, the Sooners. Then at 9 Eastern, the Florida Gators take on Mississippi State. It's all a part of Super Tuesday presented by Dollar Rent a Car on ESPN. Now, yeah, Mario Austin, we've talked a lot about it. Mississippi State undefeated 5 0 since he's been back. Probably one of the premier players in all of college basketball. He has been on a roll. They have beat Xavier and Oklahoma since he's been back. Larry Eustacey visiting with his ball club. And boy, when you get this kind of start, even though you're at home, it is hard to dig this kind of hole. What you got to do now, though, is patience has to become the name of the game, John. You got to dig yourself out slowly and say, okay, by the five minute mark, we'd like to have that, or maybe by halftime, we'd like to have it, to, you know, out of a. Well, the other part of that, Ron, is the fact that we take a look at Danny Manning, one of the all-time greats in not only Kansas history, but college basketball history. Led his Jayhawks to a 1988 national championship, went over Oklahoma, two big eight teams. Kemper Arena, Kansas City, enjoying the action. And, Ron, when you get back and think of the Iowa State team, the players, you can't get too involved. You know you're not playing well offensively, but don't let it affect the defensive end.
hard, keep doing the things they have to do defensively, and try to get slowly get back in this game. That time they got a double, Collison, and still a foul. This Kansas team will continue to pound it on you. They have, again, one of the best post-up players in the land. And when he gets the ball inside, Nick Collison has had a terrific season. 19 points, 8 rebounds. He is shooting 77% from the foul line. A year ago, Ron, this is where he struggled. Only 50% free throw shooting. Three team fouls against Iowa State. Roman with his first. Collison. Grew up not far from here. Iowa Falls, Iowa. Barnes to bring it up. Iowa State still looking for their first field goal. Turnover. Heinrich pushes it. Langford got it set. Drollman with the block, so. Already a couple of steals, and now a block for Volman in the ball game. Now Kansas having the wear excellent on the offensive end. The dribble penetration, they're getting the ball in deep. Nice play that time by Jefferson to knock away, but Langford had it seven feet from the hole. <laughs> Lefty's jumper, got it. Well, what a start for Kansas. The question has been answered. Without Wayne Simeon, what happens? Everybody else steps it up a notch, and Graves has played well. 20 to 2. The only points for the Cyclones at the free throw line. Barnes puts up the wild one, not there. Collison gets it out of the wing to Heinrich. And he'll take the three. Two. This game is on the line. Transition. Johnny, remember the one into the other. Yeah, yeah, it's just frustrating. And everybody, take a look at everybody in the white uniform has tried to score the ball, Ron. Everybody's taking their chances. And what it becomes is too much one-on-one. -on -one. Every guy by themselves is trying to score. So let's take a timeout with them. It is 22 to 2. And as we come back, a couple of guys that got away from the state of Iowa. But two guys that got away and very important guys as far as the Kansas Jayhawks are concerned from right here in the state of Iowa. Here's Ames, Sioux City, and Iowa Falls. Sioux City West High School, Kirk Heinrich. Iowa Falls High School, Nick Collison. And both were co-players of the year in the state of Iowa. How about Nick Collison's high school record? Played for his father, Dave. 101 and 1. He's a high school record. Lost one game in three years. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? It is phenomenal since he's been on the campus at large. He hasn't experienced losing a whole bunch. There's the dish off to Jefferson. And there is the first basket at the 11-22 mark. Write it down. 11-22 left in the first half. They got their first field goal. One of 12 from the field. Kansas, nine of 12 from the field. Chris Alexander in the ball game. John will tell you more about him in just a moment. Just having become eligible, a 7-1 junior college transfer out of Indian Hills. Athletic, can run. <laughs> Sullivan, short arm that one. Jake off to a really cold start. They are forcing Sullivan to go inside the paint to try to shoot over bigger players. Sullivan keeps ball faking. They're not taking it, and he's leaving it short. Good bucket by Miles again. He's got nine points. Now in his sophomore season, impressive a year ago. Seven points, nearly seven assists a ball game a year ago. Alexander, there is a no budging on the tape. He is a true 7-1. We'll see what kind of influence he might have in the middle. He's got a pretty good little jump hook. Good player, junior college. This uh, little hook right here is tough to stop. Well, and rarely do you see players anymore shoot the, the sweeping hook. And he has one. We watched him shoot around today. Very valuable at 7-1. Not many will block it. Graves backed him in, and he traveled. Yeah, we've talked about Alexander and take a look sweeping hook from a 7-1 player He's only played two games so far in a cycling uniform another junior college transfer out of Indian Hills And you're gonna hear coaches uh, around the league saying oh, with that sweeping hook We're gonna have to get backside help in a hurry because the one fault that he does have Coach Eustacey said is he will bring the ball too far down yeah, at times he will 
under 10 minutes to play in this first half. Sullivan well outside the three-point line, and he can't get that one to go. Collison another rebound. Oh, what a tough night for Sullivan. 0 of 6. Langford. Yeah, two on one break well executed by Kansas but great hustle defensively by Marcus Jefferson watch this block great hustle so Kansas fans probably wouldn't have minded something in the lower part of the body there but you know what the crowd hasn't left huh? and they won't they, they want to explode great yeah, they really are good. Here. when they introduced uh, Heinrich and Collison uh, Few boo birds, but uh, they're a lot of you know good yeah, clapping for them. They, they know they're Iowa kids. They're so proud of kids from yeah. Iowa. <laughs> we were Heinrich, talking for the end. Heinrich Heinrich committed, foul, by the way. and he had committed to come to Iowa State under Tim Floyd. Tim Floyd left. Heinrich decided to go to Kansas. Sullivan. There we go. Jake breaks out of the slump. Now one of seven. Jake has averaged nearly 25 a game against Kansas in his two home game games last two years here. That's going to be against Barnes. It's going to be the fifth team foul. For those of you who did not uh, see the, the game here with the Boston College against Iowa State, uh, Jake, we talked at length that night, uh, has lost just over 20 pounds. He said uh, last year went down to Oklahoma and they kind of ran him around a little bit as he came up the tunnel, headed toward the bus. He said, I cannot guard the guys I got to guard in this league. This headed. He said Hollis Price wore him out. <laughs> Braves. Blocked by Homer. Shot and the follow can't get it to go. Broman in there hustling, trying to get another rebound. Okay, you will push it up. A missed opportunities. Two, two putbacks really at the basket. Jefferson had one point blank. And if you're wondering in junior college play, if uh, Graves and Alexander have ever seen each other here yeah, a lot. Yep. So those moves are not first time moves for them to witness. Good defense by Sullivan to stay on the floor. Langford. So smooth, so good with the ball. The hesitation dribble. At six points, his ability to hang. Seven points, I should say. Sullivan came to the face by Graves. Not there. One and out for Iowa State. And here's a three on two break, and Heinrich picks up the offensive foul. Ron Franklin, John Sunbow, coming to you from Hilton Coliseum on the campus of Iowa State University. Roy Williams upset right here, and the reason he is, they had numbers, as I had just said, and the point is, it was poor decision making, and then to pick up a foul, his second. Well, you have three on two break, and Kirk Heinrich, who played for his father Jim and at Sioux City West, understands three on two, you kind of stop at that free throw line, and you make the decision there, you have a little jump shot, or you can take it in, simply ran over the defender. Not a smart play. Bryant Nash checks into the lineup. And also coming in Michael Lee, number 25. It's saved by Jefferson Alexander, not ready for that pass. Bryant Nash actually was the number six man on this team early. And got it to go. Marcus Jefferson. He's coming off a good ball game, though, this, uh, this past weekend. Had a couple of threes in that one. Heinrich back over on the wing. Foot on the line, that's for two, and it's not there. Sullivan with a rebound, Iowa State. Not the shot that I think uh, Roy Williams really wants out of Nash. Good pass. Nice job, and Roman. First two points for him. Slowly but surely, they, they creep back in this game, Ron, and now Kansas has to do better with possessions each time down. Look for better quality shots, get it inside the Collison. Collison not there. The rebound by Roman, and they are really fortunate that Nash didn't get an over the back as he came in crashing the boards for the rebound. Jefferson's really given Larry Stacey some good quality minutes here in the first half. When he has, he's uh, he's been a spark. The lob for Roman intercepted. Collison knocks it back over to the teammate and running, and the foul on Alexander. One thing when you have an All-American guard like Kirk Heinrich, 
taking the, uh, the ability to take the chances at times and to push the basketball, force the defensive team to get back. A year ago, this Kansas team averaged nearly 90 points, over 90 points a ball game. This year, 88. They are always on top of a defensive team. They make them run. They make them get back. And it's player one through five. They make the big guys run too. Steve Wellman just walked over to Alexander and whispered in his ear that the shirt tail had to go back in. New faces for Iowa State. We've mentioned the junior college transfers and freshman Adam Haleska. You've had preseason games and now conference play. There is a different level of intensity. I think the first 10 minutes they found out what it means to be playing the defending champion in the Final Four team of a year ago. Well, that's for sure. So we'll take a timeout as we head to break some of the action. So one of the reasons that the Jayhawks are on top by 16 points with just over six minutes to play until halftime. We'll be right back. So the score, 28 to 12, Kansas on top, blazing out of uh, the socket. Here's a reminder, more basketball coming up at uh, midnight tonight. And 21 Texas Tech will take on the, the streaking Aztecs of San Diego State. They've won six in a row. Bob Knight's Ball Club is nine and one. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. That'll be a fun one to watch. Steve Fisher and uh, Coach Knight going against each other. Will not be the first time by a long no, Back shot. from the old Big Ten days, mm -hmm. huh? See the clock running, six and a half minutes until intermission. We were just talking about the crowd. Really, they want so desperately for this ball club to come back. You know, if they could cut it to 10, and they're not going to with uh, moves like that, as Collison scores after the steal, he's now got 10 points. Aaron Miles has really frustrated Tim Barnes tonight just on some passes, and now they've got over five seconds. Didn't even get to. Didn't even get the timeout. No, he didn't. Larry Eustacey sat down and put his hand over his eyes. Well, all the players left. Arms looked like he wasn't going to take it out, and uh, Steve Wilmer started counting. Looking inside to Collison. Very deliberate. Very patient. That shot right there, well off the mark. Barnes will push it. Good job in transition by the Jayhawks. Yeah, their speed is not only on the offensive end. They get back defensively. They have not allowed this uh, cyclone ball club easy looks at the hoop on any break. There again, picks up the dribble. Interesting thing is, in his first league game, he's played so well, but Haluska has really just not even been a factor in the ball game. Yeah, we haven't noticed him. Well, maybe if he gets a shot up. That one is off the mark. Alexander tries to play volleyball with it. It's going to be saved by KU. And what happens? I mean, the Cyclones simply standing around too much offensively. There's no passing outlets or angles for Tim Barnes to even get the offense started. Tip by Alexander. Barnes comes away with it. It's a warm one. Alaska, nice job. Nice play by Barnes. Make the defender play with. He doesn't lay it in. Drag him over there once he... Picks up, lay it off to your teammate. Haluska, you'll find out in this league, and you're going to like him, and he's going to be around and play well for a long time, was an outstanding track man in high school. And in individual titles, I think won a total of nine state titles. Impressive, huh? Yep. But his first step, you might look for his first step to be blazing. It's not there. But once he's taken one, when they get out on the break like here, he can fly on the wing. Well, his senior season, think of this. Only the fourth athlete in 97 years to win four individual events. Now, we're not just talking about some types of events, and you saw him run there, a long jump, and then you go the 100, 200 meters, and, and then the man's race, the 400 meters. I mean, right. all in a day's work, huh? Four medals, four gold ones. I mentioned nine total throughout his career. So, checking back into the lineup is. Uh, Holman, Jared Holman, the sophomore out of Rimson, Iowa. Haluska, we were talking about him just a moment ago. Interestingly enough, he committed to Iowa State at the end of his sophomore year. He had his mind made up. Nash knocks down the free throw. I'm glad he was good by the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, I'm coming. I think he was oh, pretty good. I hope you're good in a couple years. I thought he was pretty good at the end of his sophomore year. 18-point <laughs> lead, 14-40, left until halftime. Alexander muscles his way in too hard. Home it on the foul. 
like the aggressiveness though of Alexander with the basketball. And again, you mentioned he played a number of games against Graves in junior college, so he's got a comfort level there. So does Graves, who goes right around him. Aggressive move by Jeff Graves, the junior, 6'9", 255 pounds. He was much larger when he arrived on the campus in Lawrence. As you look at Simeon on the bench also, speaking of large bodies, you could see that the shoulder all strapped up. Well, let's hope he's okay. They're, they're going to let it rest for 10 days, and then the doctors are going to take a look at it. What Roy said today after the shoot-around, uh, and, and he's guarded in his comments because he doesn't want to lead anybody on, but he said, my guess is, I said, what is best case scenario? He said, my guess is four to five weeks. And since this is just before the first league game, I didn't want to ask him what worst case scenario would be. We all know he had surgery on it before when he entered it in the high school. Well, impressive sophomore. 16 points a game, nearly nine rebounds. Physical rebounder, good shooting touch from the outside. And, and simply playing better every ball game. Jake against Lee. A three-pointer off the mark. And Graves goes up and brings down the rebound. Graves has seemed right at home, although he does seem a little winded right now. Looks slow. Gets he's, right played, he's really played well, though. The, the key is uh, to do it the defensive end and rebound. I mean, that's what you have to do when, you, when you're filling in a spot. Don't worry so much about scoring. They've got a lot of guys that can score the ball. What was impressive a moment ago, John, is when he tried to bring his man out top of the key, put it on the floor, yeah. and drove the basket. This time he's going to reverse that pivot. Not there. The tip inside. Lee skies for the rebound, and he can't get the follow to go. And Haluska was fouled. That's only 14 fouls on KU. Interesting point, though, Ron, and an observation. There are more blue shirts attacking that ball than white shirts, and that's not a good sign for Cyclone fans. So we'll take a break. 3.42 until halftime. All KU, 33-16. Reese Davis, Digger Phelps with you. Digger, uh, Iowa State down 17. Really a whole different world from what they've seen earlier in the season. Well, when three of your first five players are junior college players, and this is their first time going against somebody that's really good, that's when the defense showed up for Kansas. Trying to build a little bit of chemistry. We're also going to talk Pitt and Notre Dame at halftime, guys. All righty. Look forward to that, gentlemen. Three minutes, 42 seconds is what we have left uh, on our clock here. And uh, KU started off at a blistering pace, in fact, faster than their head coach wanted. They had five quick turnovers, but since then, they have really done a nice job of, uh, or a better job of taking care of the basketball. Broman, well, he's been unlucky, and Holman goes back up and gets the bottom. Well, good attacking move by Broman. Made another defender come help out, which allowed Holman the easy tip in. Dribble. Oh, you stay, she wanted a five count. Plenty of time on the shot clock, down to 13, now 12. Graves. And I don't think Roy Williams wants Jeff Graves spending so much time with the ball. You make your initial move, and if you don't have it, then maybe back out, reposition yourself. Well, your point was so well taken just a moment ago, John, when you said. You know, don't worry. If you can get a putback, then fine. But we're not counting on you to score. We want you to bang, help screen, backside help. When he takes a look at his teammates, you've got Heinrich, Collison, Miles, and Langford. They can all score the ball. Lee went back to the sideline. The ball tipped away by Collison. And uh, if that's on Roman, it's three. If it's on Holman, it's his first. And it's going to be on Holman. The bounce pass by Sullivan, really a nightmare night so far. It was late, he's one for nine from the field, and the bounce pass was lazy. Good active hands by Nick Collison. Super Tuesday at ESPN at ESPN2, featuring top 25 matchups. We're talking about the field of Finish it off here. Tomorrow night, John and I will be down in Norman, UConn, number three against number nine, Oklahoma, and then at ESPN, number 12, Florida, against eight, Mississippi State. All tomorrow on ESPN. Right. Collison knocks down that one, and he's now got I tell you what, I look forward to seeing Connecticut, number three in the country. Amika Okafor, Ben Gordon, outstanding team, really good. Okafor in, in person, I've seen, yeah. I've seen him uh, so many times on television. 
Scoring better, outstanding rebounding shot blocker, Oklahoma, Abby Arad, player of the week in the Big 12, Hollis Price. You know, Okafor, what's so impressive about him? He not only averages almost four and a half blocks a ball game, he's what, 369 in the classroom yeah, yeah. in uh, business finance. Takes care of it on, uh, on all ends. Perfectionist in school as well as on the court. Impressive. Alaska, they cut off the avenue along the baseline, and Holman can't get it to go. Tipped by Froman. Right, there are a lot of blue shirts going up there, getting the ball down. Well, and missed opportunities, but Michael Lee, who's only 6'3", was in there fighting for that ball to tip it away. And there he is again. So Holman has been a spark coming off the bench. They got to be able to score some points though. And again, everybody's standing around watching each other. It, 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 this is not a team, Kansas, and you just can't stand. You better move. Well, Miles flying to the other end and we'll get the easy two. He's now got double figures. Collison with 12, but he has 11. Seven points for Langford. Big time ball game. By your mind. You know, Iowa State looks tired. The movements are slow on the offensive end. About to go under 60 seconds until the halftime. Knocked out of bounds by Miles, and the shot clock with nine on it. Coming up at halftime, Reese Davis and Digger Phelps, Irish and the Panthers. Boy, Pittsburgh with that streak continuing. A minute with Larry Eustacey and the top 25. Play another few weeks, the top 25 starts meeting something to me. I think the preseason doesn't mean a whole lot, and then you get into conference play, you see who can really play. You're right, they probably shouldn't start it until mid January or first of February. Well, you know, now these teams finally start playing each other. Lee with his first. Lee's done a nice job of also coming off the bench as a sixth man. And his coach paid him a, a really nice tribute today. And the fact is, you know, they don't care if he does not contribute just uh, multiple points, but he doesn't hurt you well, when he he's in the yeah, line. He comes in and he's not making mistakes and he's yeah. not doing the things that, that, that are negative. Uh, and those are solid minutes. What a tough night for Sullivan, a 90% career free throw shooter. Yep. 92.4 on the season. Knocks the second one down, and uh, Jake now with his third point. He's one of nine. You know, the last time we were in here, uh, the BC game, he was only three of 15 that night. I don't know if ESPN is jinxing him or not, but it's, it's going to be on a few more times this year. 2 3 zone now by the Cyclones, wide open on the backside. Good pass. Miles really plays with his head up, his eyes up. He knows where his teammates should be. Gray saw the opening, put right on the money. Easy best. Really nice identification there. Jacobs look well coached on that play. Aluska for three, not there. That's Holman on the follow. And Holman has come off the bench and done Yeoman's work. He now has eight points. Roy Williams up instructing Miles to slow it down and go for the final shot. The shot clock is off. We'll see if the Cyclones stay in the zone. Well, now they're showing that. Sullivan will take one side or the other. Barnes will slide over unless they start going mean. High screen for Miles. There's Langford, the lefty, top of the key, in and out. Unlucky Broman, and that ball tipped away by Lee. Nice anticipation. We are at halftime. So let's take a timeout, and as we head to the break, it is. The Kansas Jayhawks on a runaway. Reese Davis and Digger Phelps have sent it to you with a halftime report. Ron, thank you very much. Kansas up by 18. No Wayne Simeon, at least for the first half of this game. No problem, Digger. But it's the experience factor, and that's why when you take a look at Roman, who was a double-double guy, goes one for nine, it's Kansas defense, and of course, Callison in the paint makes up the difference, and that's why they're down. You mentioned earlier in the first half, all the J.C. players, a little bit of an adjustment period, a little bit overwhelming in the first 20 minutes against the Jayhawks. Coming up on the halftime report, the first part of Big Monday started in the Big East. Speaking of overwhelming, Pittsburgh won against Notre Dame in the second half. We'll tell you why it happened when Digger and I come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by Mercedes-Benz located on the web at MBUSA.com. 
and the United States Army, an army of one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball, brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. And 7-Up and your local 7-Up bubbler. Make 7-Up yours. So just about set to open the second half, and uh, John Sunbold, I have to admit, when we're looking at a score of 39 to 21, Iowa State almost went half of the first half without scoring a field goal. Well, if you're a Cyclone fan, fan and just tuning in, Simeon's not playing, Heinrich has two. No, you're still down 18. I mean, Aaron Miles simply dominated that first half. He controlled it on the offensive end, Ron, and on the defensive end. He controlled the pace. He came out and made a statement, I thought, early to Tim Barnes, is that your quickness, I've seen it before. I've played against some great players. He had a couple steals. He tipped balls away. He had a couple assists. He scored 11 points. Kansas simply dominated from the first minute of the ballgame. So the interesting thing, 11 minutes, 22 seconds left in the first half. That's when the Cyclones finally scored their first field goal. Tough to win ballgame, shooting 29%. 0 of 6 from three-point land. Jake Sullivan walked by in layup lines and just said, can't get any worse, can it? And I said, no, you got to play it. <laughs> now let's see how many changes and how much the halftime conversations with their coaches uh, helped. Holman blocked, and that's Graves who got the block. Well, frustration because it's a non-basketball play. Knees aren't bent, not ready to make a pass. If he makes a pivot, kicks it out, haluska has got an easy three. Come on. The defense by Sullivan. We mentioned Heinrich only two points, one of three from the field. He didn't have to shoot it much. You know, one of the things about Kirk, though, he doesn't worry about that. No. Or some players would. He scores fine. Well, that's Kansas basketball. And that's why they win. That's what Roy Williams has built. Shot clock is down to five. Not there, and uh, Holman will grab down the rebound. Barnes fouled on that play by Aaron Miles. First foul on Miles in the first team foul here in the second half. Yeah, many coaches try to, to narrow games down into four-minute stretches maybe and say, hey, let's uh, within four minutes get this thing down and another four. We get to keep winning four-minute stretches. When you're down 18, you've got to win them by a little bit of a margin. But see if Iowa, Iowa State can get uh, going early here. Tim Barnes, who is a second-team All-American at Southeastern Illinois Community College. A year ago, averaged 19 points, seven assists. Has had a really good start for the Cyclone Ball Club. Nearly 12 points, six and a half assists. Doesn't turn the ball over much. Got no points tonight. 56.3 percent free throw shooter, and that's odd. Yeah, yeah, 53 percent, uh, 56 percent. You got to be better if you're the point guard handling the ball down the stretch, especially in conference play. They're going to play a lot of close ball games. Outside and he's well off the mark, but inside there's Graves. Unlucky on that shot. They battle it around, and here comes Goldman. Got to make those. You're six nine and a half point blank. Barnes not there, and Grohman over the back. That's foul number three on him. Grohman, an aggressive player, and uh, his energy level has helped this Iowa State team early in the season, and we will go after it. Attack. His father, Brett, was a player for UCLA back in uh, John Wooden's last season. They played UCLA when they won a championship. Also played his senior season for Jerry Tarkanian at UNLV. So he has basketball blood in him. Terrific junior college player, Snow Community College. The Graves got hit, and I don't know if they're talking about readjusting a contact or if Steve Walburn was looking to see if he had been cut. Because if he's been cut, he's uh, got to go to the bench. It looks like they're going to make him go to the bench. Well, and here's uh, Steve Wilmer will take charge of a ball game, and it's uh, one of the best officials in the country. You know, there's no question, and it is a contact. So we came over and talked with uh, Mark Cairns, the uh, the trainer. And Mark is getting him some uh, some solution down there so they can get him back in the ball game. Mark's a veteran, 23rd season, University of Kansas. Nash in and his replacement. Nice jump hook by Collison. A good start for him. He's got 
14 on the night. Collison can turn to either shoulder, left or right. Has a jump hook either way. Great pivot, footwork inside. Look at the overplay by Langford. Velasco can't get open. He's got to take his body in the defender, then pop out. Caught again. velasquez has got to change. He's a freshman, but you got to learn. Got to get open. Larry Eustacey is just still standing in the same spot and is staring at the floor. 18.05 left in the ballgame. 19 points up. KU. Forty-one twenty-two, and a reminder: more basketball coming your way. Texas Tech is out on the West Coast against San Diego State. Coach Knight's guys seem to thrive on playing on the road. They're not intimidated at all. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Tomorrow night, you and I will be down in Norman for UConn at Oklahoma. It's a great week after that ball game over on ESPN, Mississippi State at Florida, and on Wednesday night, Duke takes on Georgetown. I, mean, I think of the four days, 11 of the top 25 teams on ESPN, ESPN 2, 6 in the top 10, wins it in, we've got number one Duke in Georgetown. Great week of basketball. Boy, is it ever. Connison with the block on Jake Sullivan. The big fella is, uh, is back in the lineup. Jeff Graves after getting a repair on his contact lens. Ron, watch the movement on the offensive end by this Jayhawk team. Making Iowa State play defense, move their feet, chase guys around. Opposite of what the Cyclones are doing on their offensive end, Kansas set in aggressive defensive. Bouncer inside the Graves gets great position, scores the two and Holman with the foul. Good movement away from the ball allows Graves to slide inside. Here he comes off the screen from Miles, and then it's just power. Graves with an opportunity for minutes tonight, starting position, and has responded in a positive way. There's Barnes. He's going to take the three. Not there. Thompson still another rebound. I'll tell you. Boy. Iowa State has just been really unlucky in this one. And some very good defense on the part of KU. And they've missed open looks, and a lot of times they'll make them. But they have not converted tonight, only shooting 26% from the field. Alaska, and it's the first foul on him, but all of a sudden, Iowa State in the early going here, at the, that's the third team foul. On the inbounds play, Heinrich almost got the tip to go. Look how quickly though Miles matched up with Sullivan. He may have picked up the foul, Ron, but normally as a defender, you're going to run back to guard the basket. He sees Sullivan on his left side, and he stops, knowing Jake's probably going to catch the ball and try to shoot it. Good lead pass by Barnes, but a smart play by Miles. Back to Holeska. He puts up an air ball. Droman in the final. Jackson Droman. John, the one thing you have to worry about with a freshman like Holeska, you don't want him to get burned too badly in his first conference game because then all of a sudden you just you go all the way back as far as confidence. Hollison gets the follow. Staying with it. When you go back to Haluska. What Larry Eustacey has done with his freshman is really focused on the defensive end. Does yeah. not talk much on the offensive end. It has allowed Haluska to average 12 points a ball game, to be free on the offensive end, but really focused. Defense, don't make mistakes, knocking free throws when you get a chance. Don't worry about it on the offensive end. It'll come to you. Pick up the dribble again. No outlet. Jake Sullivan. Heinrich, who has matched up with Sullivan most of the night, has made Jake take it to the basket. The foul's going to be on Sullivan. Second out here. And a timeout. 15-37 left of the ballgame. 45-26. All KU in our first Big Monday. Just after, just over 15 minutes left in the ballgame, and now it's time for a rolling rock, shooting the rock game stat. Iowa State 
season almost 50 percent fourth of the Big 12 and tonight 29.7 in fact as we mentioned coming out at halftime they didn't hit their first field goal until the 11 22 mark of the first half and that is what hurt them a year ago when they uh, went four and 12 in the Big 12 was the fact they didn't score the ball well enough down the stretch lost a lot of close games. Some of the crowd uh, getting up there as they we came out of the timeout trying to get them fired up. Collison fired or fouled by Roman. That's four on him. So Jackson's going to have to sit down with a lot of time to play. Well, it's the execution, swinging the ball from one side to the other. Miles, a hard bounce to his left, and then the bounce pass in. And you can see Roman's arms going forward, not straight up. Every time you do that, they're going to blow the whistle. I don't see any question about that one. Crowd didn't like it, but it's just because of the way. And Larry is talking about verticality. And yeah, it wasn't there. No, I mean, he was moving there. into it, just as you described. Yeah, the arms were, were laying at an angle. Big Alexander now comes in. For Broman is going to have to get some positive minutes. I thought he played a pretty good first half. Yep, he did. Yeah. So Collison now with 18 points, got five rebounds. The amazing thing about it is Graves has got nine rebounds. He's done the job that has been at defensively and rebound. Alexander going against Collison, and there is that jump hook again. That's sweet because the ball's almost coming down. He's so tall. Yeah, it is hard to stop at 7 1, and we'll see if Kansas will run a player at him. I don't think they will yet. I think they'll make Alexander make a few of because the chances when he's bouncing it in there, he probably has an opportunity to lose him, too. Good pass. What a pass. Well, missed it from point blank range on the floor. Who is that? Valeska is down there with Collison. Well, what a pass behind him. Graves missed it. An easy one. And uh, every coach and every player will say, hey, big fella, dunk this one. Watch his pass. He's the floor. Just go up and dunk this. A little hard. Again, there's excitement for a player like Jeff Graves playing his first Big 12 contest. Solid body control by Jake. And it forced him inside. Sullivan took his time and was patient. Collison way outside. We've mentioned Kirk Heinrich, and this time making Sullivan put it on the floor so he can't just pull up for a jump shot. But got it in the lane, better balance than he had the first half, finished it. Seven points for Jake now. It's about to go into 14 minutes left in the ball game. And the crowd trying their best to get this ball club up and going. Trying to spread the floor and allow the penetration with the ball inside. Jake Sullivan. Going to work. Well, somebody's got to put them on their shoulders and get it going. Tough kid. Loves to compete, loves to play, and loves the environment right here. It is his life, isn't it? Yep, but he really is. He spends uh, most days in the gym. It's going to be a foul on Haluska. Second on him. 16 fouls against Iowa State. One so, thing uh, you know, Ron, about the Kansas team, they won't rattle. You know, they've been in every big environment you can name and, and ask of them. And they've been through it all. If you play Kansas and beat him, you've got to make plays. Collison against Alexander. And they're going to call the foul on Alexander. Boy, he was underneath the basket when, uh, when the contact occurred. From our angle, looked like a pretty good block that yeah. time. Three we'll fouls. Call it as we see it. Watch him go on the floor. Now he's given up position there, and it looked like, looked like Nick brought the ball back into the defender. No, see, he's underneath the basket. That would have been the biggest wraparound in history if he's been able to get that one to go. Julius Irving stop. Yeah.
Collison with the second, and now he's got 19. Seven of eight from the free throw line. We mentioned in the first half last year he struggled at 58% from the foul line. It's much better this year. Is timid, not playing with a lot of confidence on the offensive end. Marcus Jefferson uh, about to take off a warm up and check into the lineup. Braves moving through the lane, and that is a nice move. And what a play by Collison! Put it on the floor, made his move. Defense came, made the pass to his teammate Graves. Seven points for Graves and nine boards. So he has listened well. Trying to get a backdoor cut to Sullivan. Heinrich right there. And they got numbers. Langford has got height and distance as well. That is great defense, Ron. On the backdoor cut, Heinrich knew that Sullivan was going backdoor. Defensively, you put your hand down low because most passes on a backdoor cut are going to be bounce passes. Heinrich picked it off. Lead pass easy, too, for his teammate Langford. Well, Super Tuesday at ESPN, ESPN 2 featuring top 25 matchups. First of all, on ESPN 2, 8 o'clock tomorrow night, John and I will be down in Norman, Oklahoma for number three UConn against number nine Oklahoma. Then on ESPN at 9 o'clock Eastern, number 12 Florida against number eight Mississippi State. Super Tuesday presented by Dollar Rent a Car on ESPN. The coaches poll. UConn sliding up there to number three. How about the win Pittsburgh over Notre Dame? Impressive before yeah, our ball. Game. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised they beat them at home, but not by that margin Boy, because it's a good ball club. But Pittsburgh is outstanding. Alabama. So we got 12-28 left in this one. The first conference game for both teams. Roy Williams three wins away from number 400. Well, you know, things don't get easier for Iowa State. They got to go on the road and go down and face Rick Barnes, Texas Longhorns, down at the drum. And then they have Oklahoma and then at Missouri. <laughs> well, welcome all the new players to a big club. Good move by Jake Sullivan. Jake now in double figures. He's got 11. Collison, quick move, reverses it. That's the quickness uh, of going underneath before he finishes the move he, he kind of quicks the defender 21 points now for him he has spent a lot of time working on his footwork and the moves inside a lot of practice time going to be Graves with a silly foul backing underneath Holman two fouls on him the shot that actually Roy Williams is inviting Iowa State to take they wouldn't mind Holman shooting jump shots with a hand in his face here at 6'9", sophomore. Really yeah, had his career game, Ron, when you were up here for the Boston College game. 18 points, 11 rebounds. You know, and we, we laughed because the day before in, in practice, Coach Eustacey was just all over him. And the kid responded so wonderfully. And he's done a good job of uh, sparking them tonight, but not enough. 54-36, it is the Hawks in control. Eighteen point lead for KU and let's show you a very big injury. We hope it is not for the season. Wayne Simeon watch what happens on this play. He will go up and his arm as he tried to block the ball. He jammed into the rim. Here it is right here. Now that is a repeat injury on a shoulder that he had to have operated on in high school. He's on the bench. You can see that they have that thing restricted so we can't move it at all. Seven to ten days. They will reevaluate. And their best guess is if it is not very serious, maybe four to five weeks. But if it is, he might have to undergo surgery. We're not suggesting because the doctors haven't said that, but that, that would be the other alternative. Boy, that could be very, very tough on this Jayhawk ball club. Collison again as he reverses the ball, goes underneath, and he has been what a mainstay tonight. 23 points. And if you're a high school player, you know, set your VCR and, and rewind how Collison plays on the block. If you're a tall kid wanting to learn how to play inside, watch your footwork, watch the lose the rim, go over bigger guys, round. And I tell you what, Alexander's taller, but Collison's getting a clinic inside. Jefferson, uh, yeah, he got it to go down. One other thing that you can watch Collison on if you ever get a chance to go see KU play. From the time he comes on the floor, Heinrich missed the shot, couldn't get the foul. 
Now we'll finish the story on uh, Thomas in just a moment as Jake Sullivan looking to get something going. Holman didn't see Frazier trailing on the play. Cyclones had numbers five on three and weren't uh, quick enough to move the ball before the two defenders from Kansas got back. Larry Eustacey all the way out on the floor. The officials trying not to pay any attention to him, and Collison just continues to light it up. Boy, going to work. What I was going to say about Collison, when he comes on the floor, he doesn't joke around with anybody. He spends all his time focusing, working on what he knows he has to do during the game. You never see him shoot until he's warmed up for a while, even a three-point shot, because that's not what he does. Well, we see a lot of big players come out in warm-ups and start, they shoot threes and walk around. I mean, Nick goes to work. Now he pulls up for a three. He's going to show you the whole thing. Right now, he's showing you the whole package, everybody. What a ball game. Ron Franklin, John Sunbull coming to you from a disappointed Ames, Iowa for a conference opener. And we're about to have 10 minutes left until the end of the ball game. Career high for Collison, 28 points, and right now he's sitting on 28. And he just feels it. He's got a smile on his face when he goes down the floor, looking to score every time. Well, you know how <laughs> pleasing this is to him as Aaron Miles puts it high off the glass. I mean, being from the state of Iowa, he certainly doesn't want to come back here to uh, to Ames and lay an egg, and he's done anything but that this evening. Now 28, three-point shots, free throws he's made. He's had great low post moves, 10 of 13 from the field. A couple of beautiful reversals here in the second half. That ball... Partially blocked as uh, Keith Langford got a hand on. Nice lead pass. Collison gets it back to his guards. And Collison had it knocked away by Alexander. And it went off Collison. And he turned around to the official and said, You're right. So Lee is coming back at the ball game, number 25, 6'3 sophomore out of Portland Jefferson. He and Miles, of course, in high school together. And uh, Michael was the tight end. Aaron Miles was the quarterback in their high school football team. A little connection from high school to now Kansas yeah. and Michael Lee playing more minutes this year. Last year appeared in 27 games, only about three minutes of ball game, but this year they're counting on him for minutes again not to produce some scoring and things to be a solid defender rebound if you can make things happen like for uh, forcing that one up just a little bit he's been silenced here in the second half but it, it's one of those things if somebody else has picked up the side because Roman scores for the Cyclones and Roman now with six a yeah, good interior pass that time from outside to inside by Sullivan good lead pass timeout called by Kansas That time Collison got caught on the low side and Sullivan put it away from the defender just allowed his teammate Broman for an easy catch and an easy two. Well a reminder that Big Monday continues tonight more basketball at midnight Bobby Knight and the Texas Tech Red Raiders are out on the left coast against Steve Fisher and the streaking Aztecs who have won six in a row. Uh, the Red Raiders are nine and one on the season. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Well, take a look at that. Coach Knight, four wins away from the Magic 800. Dean Smith on top. Left field reserve. Just retired. Been around a long time, isn't he? Long time. I was looking at the, the, the place uh, that he has been in the, in the aggregate page of the newspaper this morning. And boy, he has had a great deal of success. In his life. Always kind of tried to fool him a little bit by his uh, <laughs> country talk at times. Man knew how to coach. Good steal. Pass to Collison, taken away by Broman. The Broman's got six points, but he's done some stuff on the defensive end as uh, well. A couple of steals, a couple of uh, nice blocks. That foul on Collison. First foul on Collison with a standing ovation from the crowd that a KUQ player had a foul for. Him. But this. Uh, this officiating crew has, has done a good job. It's it's not the fault of the officials that the score is sitting where it is right now, 23 points. You know what, Ron, it's hard to get good calls when you're a half step late on a lot of things. It really is. I mean, and I think the side of this whole ball game have been a half step off or a step off, and Kansas 
give Roy Williams and his staff credit. Everybody, the papers talked about it, radios talked about it. They don't have Simeon. What are they going to do? And they made a statement. And this is the defending Big 12 champs, a Final Four team, and uh, they're still making a statement. Just under eight left in the ball game, and it's a 22-point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is presented by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And we are back. Well, Donaldson uh, came back to his home state of Iowa tonight. Boy, he's not disappointed. 10 of 14 from the field, John. Back home uh, one last time. 28 points. He has had a couple steals. He's had a couple block shots. He has converted from outside. He has made outstanding moves on the inside. You mentioned around 10 of 14 from the field. He's knocked one or two in from three-point land. You see his six rebounds, seven of eight from the foul line. We still have nearly uh, eight minutes left in this ballgame. This is uh, Dad Dave Cottleson, athletic director at Iowa Falls High School. Was a uh, was Nick's high school basketball coach. Now just the AD there. As I mentioned in the first half, 101 and one in high school. Nick Collison. <laughs> That's quite a record. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> That's impressive. Well, Nash upset with himself. We talked about the coaches said that you know he he doesn't get you beat, but that pass right there was directly off Heinrich's foot. He he'd have to work on that to get it to happen again. Barnes. Good switching. Cut off penetrators and switch when they have to. Sullivan dishes off and he gets the assist as it's scored easily by Holman. Everything though, Ron, congested for the Cyclones on the offensive end. That allows the defense to pack it in with a lot of hands and as active as they are for this Kansas team, they can get a lot of steals. Holman on double figures. He's got a dozen. About to go under seven minutes left to play. You see Heinrich rubbing his chest. Setting the play as they spread out on the wings. In ten seconds now, the shot clock. Lee for three. Good wide open look. It's now five of ten on the year from beyond the three point line. Won't shoot a lot of them, but uh, those kind of looks will take. Sullivan way outside, not there. Rebounded by Connorsy. And he'll go right back to her. Wide open look this time. Not there. Sometimes the magic works and sometimes it doesn't. And boy, Kirk tonight, it uh, has not been the kind of evening he would have liked. One of nine from the field. Three fouls on Lee. Team foul, seven against uh, Iowa State, and now five against the Hawkeyes. Or the Jayhawks, I should say. Hawkeyes, we think of that football stuff, too. You know, I did, I had lunch today, and then someone from Iowa State were in Ames, came up and said, hey, you know, we beat the Hawkeyes in basketball. I said, yeah, I know that. And they said, you know, we also beat them in football. I said, okay, <laughs> thanks for reminding me. Oh, oh nice bounce God. pass. And Collison, because of that nice dish by oh. Miles, now has a new career high. He's got 30 points. You will not see any prettier pass than this one right here. Coming down the floor, and I look at it. Look at the defense. And he throws this ball down low. Offensive player can see it. Collison running the floor. Miles has had a terrific game. I get one of the most underrated point guards out there in this country is Aaron Miles. Looks for his teammates first and score when he wants to. He's strong enough, physical enough with the basketball. 6'1, 185, can shoot it outside. Broman, who uh, has four fouls, is going to the bench. The reason he's going to the bench is because he still had his back. Oh, that was the fifth foul. Okay. All right. I started to say Larry was wanting to take him out when he did not turn around and transition, and the play went right by. You now, tough night for Jackson Broman. Again, welcome to uh, Big 12 basketball. You know, it's a different intensity, a different pace. But he'll be back, and he'll have to be back. Come on, 
Barnes. Barnes is 0 of 6 from the field. That's his second point, and now his third. Time of the shot clock just now at 15. High screen and roll to get it down to 10. Last time it resulted in a three pointer for Michael Lee. Heinrich. Wow. Way outside. <laughs> and he cans this one. Uh -oh. After going uh, one of nine, you would think a difficult shot. That was deep. So almost lost his barge deep in the corner, and he knocks that one down. 72-48, 5-10 left in the ball game. Langford, that ball knocked away by Holman. Jefferson tries, and uh, the ball's going to come back to KU. as John mentioned it's it's not going to get any easier for this uh, cyclone team because now they go on the road to go down to Austin then uh, they have a week off come back and play Oklahoma here which uh, we know the Sooners then the Tigers right we go to Missouri so tough start Langford got hit in the nose and is still down. They already have. Two. Well, and, and he's playing with a broken nose. He got his, his nose was broken in practice a couple weeks ago. Does not play with a mask. Ooh. Holman, after trying to make the block, inadvertent blow to the face. Well, that could not feel very good, probably. <laughs> not on one that's already broken. Uh, that'll bring uh, that'll bring tears to those eyes in a hurry. So Lee comes into the ball game, and Michael will go to the free throw line to shoot for him. 60% free throw shooter. Good stroke. Barnes tried to dish it back, tried to get a little give and go there, and stolen by Kansas. Let's see, 18, 19 turnovers now against the Cyclones. Wow, that's a big number. Alaska prepares to check back into the lineup, as does Langford. Travel. And you know, that's something that that Roy is not going to be happy about when uh, he talks with his ball club at their next workout. They've got 14 turnovers and had five very early in what was a, an overly high paced ball game well, to start with. And there'll be games where they have a higher number because of the pace they play. They, they will force the issue in the tempo a little bit and then that'll cost a turnover. This pass. Holman. Boy, here they come. How about that? Transition basketball. Goes through the net on one end. It goes from Miles to Langford in a matter of a second and a half. He lays it on, in on the other end. You're right. Holman was trying to get back. He just counted his 14th point. And then whoosh, whoosh, here come Blue Jersey. Haluska. Ruby to his left. Hits the front iron hard on that one. Can't get it to go. And a held ball. Jefferson and Collison. And it's going to stay with KU. And there's a timeout. 328 remaining. 77 to 50. Jayhawks. KU by 27 points and a reminder Super Tuesday at ESPN and ESPN 2. Now at ESPN 2 tomorrow night, John Bob will be down in Norman, number three against number nine, UConn and Oklahoma. And on ESPN, number 12, Florida and number eight, Mississippi State. That's at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Super Tuesday presented by Dollar Rent-A-Car. Ron, it was a year ago in Oklahoma. Went to Connecticut. Hey, hey. Ra, 24 points at the game-winning shot in the last 20 seconds and I thought that game gave the Oklahoma players the confidence that they could go anywhere and beat anybody later on obviously they end up in the final four.
don't disagree with you because you know whether it's stores or Hartford, yeah, very difficult places to play. Heinrich can't get it to go. He's got the, the tie to begin. Halesko and Graves. It'll go back the other way with the Cyclones. Now Jeff Hawkins comes into the lineup. Heinrich goes out. Collison goes out. And even the, the Jayhawk players applauding the efforts of their teammates tonight. 31 points for Nick Collison, eight rebounds. Hawkins, he's a quick just come into the lineup, not long, and the follow in the jam. Wow. Well, they haven't quit playing. You know, Nash probably is the best athlete uh, on this ball club. And, and they've got some good ones, but I mean, he, he can sky. I'm not sure how high his vertical is, but he can jump out of the gym. Now you mentioned Jeff Hawkins coming in. Quick guard. Quick hands registered a year ago. Under two and a half to play, 29 point lead. Glad to see him back into the lineup. And after getting banged on the nose, it's hard to believe, as painful as that would be, as you said, John, that, uh, that he doesn't play with a mask, but I guess he just feels as though he'd be too encumbered by wearing one. He is not hesitant, though, to go to the basket, make his moves. You know, Brian Nash is the other one. That has a broken nose. Langford with the first one. Now the thing that the Iowa State faithful will keep an eye on the losses of all time at Hilton overall is 25 for the University of Iowa. That was in 2001. And Vandy in 1975. And the worst conference loss was 21 points against uh, KU in 98. Olson and Benson into the lineup. Langford is out. And Moody checks into the lineup also for KU. Game, I'm sure uh, none of the three of those names you mentioned thought that they'd be in this one. You're probably right. 31 point margin. Surprising ball game. Out top. Under 140 left in this one. KU will win its first conference game of 2003 with ease. I think wins in the Big 12 on the road, Ron, are going to be tough to find. I mean, the conference is top to bottom outstanding, and you come into Ames, Iowa, and win by maybe 30 points or in that range. Really impressive. And, and, and I think really, Roy Williams Ball Club just made a statement. What did they ever? Sure, a lot of conference coaches saw at least the beginning of this one tonight. Sullivan now with uh, with 13 points. 60 seconds left in this one. Moody back out to Lee. Sports Center coming up next. Stuart uh, Scott Tyson. Anatomy of a loss. Worst call and MJ's encore. That on Sports Center. Bouncer into Alexander. See if he tries that uh, hook again. Yeah, he does. Comes up a little bit short on that one. Back on the floor. Jefferson, after the steal, scores the easy two. I like the hook. Needs a little more arc to it, but I do like the hook. It's a great weapon. I'm always amazed at uh, well, Cinder, who did it in high school and through college, and then became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. It's the greatest shot in basketball. No one could defend it, and not many young players use it. Holman with a block of Moody shot. Under 20 seconds now. Jefferson for three. Nope. Follows his own shot and then uh, has it knocked out of bounds by Lee. Shot clock is off. We have 13.7 seconds remaining in this one. Good win. Good statement game. Miles and Collison leading the way. Heinrich didn't even have a very good ball game. Langford was solid. But Jeff Graves did a nice job. Three-pointer on the way. Got it. 
but they're going to say two. And Benson hits his bucket and the big smile on his face, and sideline stands at two. Now, but off the mark, and this one is history. So Kansas with a mighty demonstration here tonight as they came out firing in the first half. Cyclones couldn't find the hoop and a big difference here. But the final score, 83-54, it is Kansas winning. Coming up next to East Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. And now for John Sunbold and our entire ESPN crew, Ron Franklin saying so long from Ames, Iowa.